Welcome on 360 Sport on Trust TV. Um, Adini uh, G. Shafe just seeing there. Those games being organized by Nigerians to keep themselves fit when it comes to sport. You just can never take away Nigeria, they are always there to participate. Right now, we start with uh, a story that has to do with Nigerian team and ball team really doing well. The under 18 team doing well over there in Cote d'Ivoire. They won their game convincingly yesterday. Nigeria under 18 girls defeat Madagascar 54 17 at IHF, that's International Handball Federation Women's Championship taking place in Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire. Congrats to them. That was the second game they are playing. They defeated Guinea in the fourth game, and now they also defeated Madagascar in the second um, game that they played yesterday. Good one for them. And right now, our under-18 team are trying to see how they can at least make it better, make it sharp when it comes to handball. They, we've seen what the Tigress did when it comes to handball, or rather basketball, at the Afro basket, winning back-to-back -back for the fourth time in a row. And we saw what the Falcons also did over there at the World Cup before they were actually bonded out by England. Right now, this is handball, and our ladies are doing so well in Côte d'Ivoire. Well, right now, just to give you an update concerning that particular story before we unveil our guest in the studio. Our guest in the studio is someone who has seen it when it comes to Taekwondo sport. He was there in 2008 at Beijing Olympics where he won bronze medal in uh, Taekwondo. Now, let's just look at a brief of his, uh, uh, his name is Chika Chikumerije, his medal record representing Nigeria. Men's Taekwondo, Olympic Games, he won bronze medal, third place, 2008 uh, Beijing Olympics. That's uh, at the category of a uh, plus 80. And you have all African Games, he won gold medal, first place, 2007, all years, plus uh, 80 kilogram category, silver uh, in 2011 in Maputo. And also uh, he won third place, 2003 uh, in Abuja, also in the plus 80 kilogram category. So we have in the studio uh, bronze medalist at the Olympics, Nigerian star when it comes to Taekwondo, Chika Chukumeriji. Good to have you, Chika. My pleasure to be here, Adeni, <laughs> and good morning to Nigerians. Mm. Uh, 
Well, at least uh, a lot of Nigerians now we know, okay, this is the man they've been talking about, the Chika Chikumerije. <laughs> it's, it's my pleasure, it's an honor. Everywhere I go, people mm. always thank me for that service. I'm always grateful for this support. Good one. So, uh, first of all, before we actually talk about uh, what brought you, let, let's look at your, your journey in the world of Taekwondo to inspire a lot of uh, young ones out there who are on holiday now. If they, are, if they are going to go into any sport. Just a brief history or story concerning your journey in the world of uh, sport, Taekwondo. Very difficult. I grew up in a system where the training was not systemic, so I had to do a lot of uh, self-research. So you train just thinking was the best thing for me, you know, but uh, I had a natural thing for research. I had a natural thing for research, um, for, you know, just finding out what I needed mm -hmm. and I just developed uh, over the time. So I'll, I'll just tell you it's very difficult. It's almost easier to look at the challenges, but if you determine that this is where you want to go, then you certainly have to go there. In regards to uh, kids participating in sports, I cannot emphasize enough how important parents must engage their kids through sport. You do not have to become a professional athlete like me or anybody out there, but for, the health, for health, for wellness, definitely very important. And Every sport has what it gives to the kids. So, for example, if you do sports like badminton, table tennis, volleyball, your reaction will be fast, you know, your coordination. If you take up something like gymnastics, you have good flexibility, swimming, whole body exercise, your heart, and the martial arts. So, whether you want taekwondo, you want judo, you want kung fu, uh, a bit of discipline. So, what I generally advise is when your child is in school, few months, different sports, you know, between when they are four years and when they get to 14, let them try out different sports to develop different things. So if you are playing a team sport, you learn teamwork. All these traits, when they get old, they are going to need it in the workplace, you know. So that's actually my philosophy towards uh, sports, which has helped me a lot. But if you want to do Taekwondo, you are very welcome, very capable coaches all across. Get across to the stadium, whatever state you are, make inquiries. If you want to contact me, he's here <laughs> and will tell you the best place for your child to be engaged in Taekwondo. Good one there. We've been with uh, Chika Kuchukumereje, bronze medalist for Nigeria in Taekwondo sport. Youth out there, the young ones who are at home right now on holiday, if you want to go into sport, not someone is here to inspire you or to let you know that you can actually su at least uh, succeed when it comes to any sport you want to do. You just have what he said. In any sport you want to, all you need to do as a parent or guardian, let them get uh, to start very young from age 4 to 14. They'll be able to discern which of the sports they really want. Right now, let's go to uh, Chika Chukumereje is the founder of uh, Chika Chukumereje Sports Foundation, uh, a foundation that actually has been seen to making sure uh, youths are really developed when it comes to sports development in Nigeria. Now, let's talk about fitness. Let's start with fitness. Mm -hmm. Let's focus on that. Uh, you have an event coming up on Saturday, mm -hmm. and it's like a two-in-one, both uh, for fitness mm -hmm. and also taekwondo. We are focusing mm -hmm. on fitness. Now, a lot of Nigerians, uh, they don't know that fitness is actually a sport. They see it as just a fun, fun game. No, uh, it's a sport. And uh, uh, let's hear from you. What does it entail? Look, the statistics for health-related obesity and being fit is really, really high. Mm -hmm. uh, I meet so many people, knee issues, they have back issues. They've gotten to the stage, they can afford it, but they are not enjoying life. If they sit down for long in the office, back issues. To climb steps, wahala. Mm -hmm. to, to enjoy their kids, wahala. And I thought to myself, uh, we need to encourage a more <coughs> active lifestyle for more Nigerians. And I think the sports industry is best placed to deliver this kind of result. And I thought to myself, sometimes when you just put sports, people won't come. You need to also make it entertaining. You have to make it engaging. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do an event that people can come to with their families and have fun. And that's why when I was doing this edition, I decided in the morning between 7.30s and 9.30s, a Saturday morning, do free aerobics. Anybody can come and join, you know? So I'll take the class. I'm going to have also two other uh, instructors that can continue if I need to go and do other stuff. I decided we're going to put table tennis. We're going to have video games. Young people love that kind of stuff. We're going to put board games, all this uh, Ludo, Ward, just like struggle. just like this, just like what we saw. saw. Mm. You saw how we laughed when yeah, we, exactly. we saw it. You know, mm. uh, there's going to be a bouncy castle, let, let children play, and we'll have a food area so that uh, if you just want to take in the scenes, you can sit around, watch your children playing. The children can be playing. Every, so something for everyone. 
And both in front and back of the indoor basketball hall, you can also, going, there's going to be music playing so that the whole place is lively. So between seven in the morning to seven in the evening, action. Mm. And four to six in the evening, I'm getting a, these dance groups. I want them to do a dance face off. So some people like dance. Let them. It's, still, it's still sports. Yes, mm. you know. So by doing this, the sports industry, just like entertainment, you see comedy shows, you see dance shows, and you see people flocking there, and uh, people want that kind of hangout. You see people going to the entertain uh, cinemas, buy popcorn, watch a movie, and I said, look, this sports industry, well, we've been here for twenty years, we've done this. Why don't you do something different? Yes, we can deliver what the entertainment, comedy, dance also deliver and give the public another option. And I'm going to try it, you know, and it was one of the things I discussed as a foundation because, you know, for the past 10 years, I focused on high performance, training uh, underprivileged students, computer training, taekwondo training, and that program which I ended after the Tokyo it delivered uh, Elizabeth Ayan Nacho, uh, first female in, in about 16 years qualified for the Olympics, second ever female. It delivered some national champions. It delivered African medalists. And uh, uh, most of the students in that program, now they are graduates from the University of Abuja. Some of them are working, some of them are serving. So I'm very happy with that program. Mm. So the next phase for my foundation, one, we're going to kickstart an orphanage project to engage two or three orphans. Just the same thing I did the elite. But not that I'm thinking of a career sport. I'm thinking more of uh, computer training and a place they can work out with me uh, two, three times uh, a month. So I want to use these sporting events we want to do. One, develop grassroots sports. Two, give the public another option for entertainment. And three, highlight this new course, which I'm sure I'll drive over in the next 10 years. So I'm going to be doing a lot of sporting events because it's the sports industry, from sports media to the athletes, to the coaches, to the referees. How can we make it beneficial to all of us? Mm. We say the sports doesn't generate income. We say people don't come to our event, you know. I don't want to complain. I, that's why I've sat together. I'll keep engaging young people. Like for this event, we have uh, about uh, 70 volunteers. Mm. And all of them are young. I met them at the stadium yesterday. Well, some of them are 100 level, 200 level. They were very excited. And I said, guys, help me deliver this. Let us give the public something to look Different. forward to. So I'm really, really excited by it, you know. By this. Well, right now, uh, when it comes to uh, fitness, uh, really, like I said earlier, mm -hmm. that a lot of people see fitness and see, mm, it's just, just go and do your normal routine. Some yes. see as routine, some see as fun, some yes. see as just a while away time and mm. all that. But really, it's a big sport. Uh, and now we have a Nigerian who has seen it all when it comes mm. to sports in across the globe. Mm. He has been there, all African Games, Olympics. He actually came third, winning bronze medal for Nigeria in Taekwondo. Mm. And now he's with us in the studio talking about fitness, why you need to keep fit. Now, uh, let, let me take you back on the journey. Mm. Look at this particular uh, picture, this <laughs> graphics. <laughs> wow. Uh, that was the Olympics. The years right? have gone, huh? 2008, right? <laughs> yes, 2008, Benji. Yeah. So how do you feel? taking this particular flower as uh, the top place winner? I remember the Olympics and I remember being very zoned into winning the gold. Mm. So if you see me in that picture, I wasn't particularly happy. I felt like I lost. Mm. But now, what, 12, 13 years down the line, you are grateful. You are grateful why? Because many people went to the Olympics and they did not win a medal. You are grateful that Nigeria has only 23 Olympic medals, you are one of them. Mm. You are grateful to know that out of over 200 million Nigerians, you can point and say, not only was I at three Olympic Games, but I won a medal won at a one. Medal. And it's not the medal itself, it was the journey, you know, uh, self-sacrifice from family, trying to, I wrote my own program for both uh, Beijing and London. So I'm just grateful for all these experiences, grateful that you are Nigerian, you carry the Nigerian flag, you did the under Nigerian flag, despite all the challenges, you know. So it's something to reflect on, um, <clears throat> and it's something to use to just inspire the next set of people that really, sports, entertainment, business, entrepreneurship, whatever you want to do. Um, it might be easier for other countries, their system might be better, 
But Nigeria is about the people, you know, and saying you give your own quota. So through my foundation, for instance, I might not impact 200 million people, but I might be affecting 20 people positively. And it's okay for me. So if everyone plays their part, then uh, definitely we can go forward. So when I look at that picture, that's what occurs to me. You use your story, you tell your story, just like I hear other stories, I'm inspired. So you hope that a young person is, is hearing you, hearing that it was very difficult. Hearing that we're on different pedestals. So my dad, of course, was a late senator. So people naturally assumed it was easy, you know. Uh, but you could be the son of someone who has nothing. Mm. Or you could be the son of someone who has something. But your destination can be the same. So your starting points might be different. You might have to work a bit harder. But definitely, there are many examples you can point to of saying, definitely, I can make it. So you can choose to sit down and grumble and complain, or you can choose to look around there and say, what do I have and how can I achieve it? And that's what I do from Athens to Beijing to London. It was not easy to design your own program. Uh, Chief Ikeji, uh, Patrick Ikeji, Alaji Yakmut, they knew when I designed the program and I gave it to them, they were like, wow, how did you do this? London, a better program. And to show it works, I took that same program and from scratch, you developed people from scratch. So within three years, Elizabeth qualified for the Olympics. She won a medal at the uh, All African Games. She went to the Olympics and all that. So it shows you, I knew what I, I was doing, but it also shows you that if everyone just do your own best mm. and um, definitely things will push forward. And I remember one of my, my twin brother, he, he is in the UK. So he sometimes encourages me to come over. I have so many opportunities, you know, very valid. I know. First degree, mechanical engineering. Second degree, operation supply chain management. First class, best graduating student. So the opportunities for operation and supply chain, massive. But I know I'm happy doing sports. I know I'm happy doing philanthropy. And I just decided you can use this too. You can have a good living. You can change lives. If I move out, that's one of that good resource moving out. It becomes worse. We must fight this fight together and say this is the way forward. So that's just the general the philosophy. So when I look at that picture, these are all the things running through my mind. Grateful to God for life. Grateful to everyone that has support. There are many. To mention them is, is massive, you know. So that's it, Adeni. Well, just uh, to give a, a rundown concerning his journey to win bronze at the Olympics. We've been talking concerning fitness and also Taekwondo. Being a Taekwondoist, uh, he's there, he was there, he's still there, doing the business there. Right now, let's talk about Taekwondo in Nigeria. That sport, <coughs> or generally a sport, but we use Taekwondo as a case study. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of uh, youths or young ones, even parents, uh, shy away from the fact that, oh, Taekwondo is martial arts sport, mm -hmm. uh, Taekwondo, karate, judo, and all the other uh, class of uh, uh, martial arts. Uh, what would you tell young Nigerians uh, to do? Look at these young ones. Look at them competing in uh, this particular sport called Taekwondo. The one you did at the Olympics. Look mm. at the younger ones taking after you. Mm. Mm. All right. Th this, is, this is what I will say. Um, a few of my students privately, they signed up because the parent came to me and said, my child is being bullied. Mm. And I can tell you within three months, I have three cases like that, that they came and said, look, wow, the child started standing up to the bully. Mm. Just three days ago, one of my clients sent me a text. She was very grateful. She said, since my child is training with you, I noticed that they are always on time. They are more disciplined. They are in their room, do their assignment. Look, just have a good instructor. That is what the martial art does for you. The martial art is not for you to beat up people and explore. But <laughs> when they are bullying your child, you would not be there. And that negative, um, the negativity or the consequences is long lasting. So you start noticing withdrawal symptoms. You start noticing they don't talk to you anymore. They can't express themselves. But when the child is confident, they might not be able to beat the bully, but they think they can, they know they can. It changes everything. <clears throat> and it's the same with most sports. 
sports people, we don't back down from challenges. I was on some of some air on radio a few days ago, and they were asking me the Falcons and England. What do I think? They are they are ranked four and forty. Forty and four. And I said, look, we at least don't think like that. If I walk into a room with those Falcons, I can guarantee you that that ranking does not matter to them. And you saw the game. They were lucky. They were lucky to, to win. We beat those girls, in my opinion. This is, the, this is what sports gives to you. To acknowledge that this person is good. This person, okay, more experience, more everything. But to say, I am going to conquer. And when your child does something like martial arts and they get more confident, then you find out that as they grow old and enter the work environment, they need this. They need this to secure jobs. They need this to work with their colleagues. They need this to add value to that workplace. So you're not enrolling them now, just for today. Hmm. If someone tries their DNA now, maybe we'll call police or we'll call somebody to come and settle. Adults, naturally should not fight. We have learned how to discuss. But young people is a given, especially the boys. And you want your child to be able to hold his own. You say, don't bully others, but don't be bullied. Whether it's verbal bullying, whether it's physical bullying, you, you want your stand. child to stand uh, tall and strong. So that's it. As for the other sports, uh, the structure of sports, I, I'm not thinking improvements. I'm thinking innovation. Uh, after the Olympics, I felt really burnt out for 20 years on the top, and I took a break. You know, that's why you've not seen me for two years. I was just training people privately. And it's one of the problems I've reflected upon. How can we innovate sports? And I'm sure in the next four or five years, I'm going to first focus on my sports, but I'm coming back to sports generally. How can we make it work? Why is South Africa there, out there, you know, UK, US? and we can do it. So I'm reflecting and researching on a very practical solution to this, you know, and I have a template, I have a template. I, I know uh, the training required, the infrastructure required, the equipment, the policies you have to make, all the people that have to be involved, both at grassroots, at uh, national and international. And how do you build a system that works? And this is one of the tasks over the next four years. I'm going to document and I'm going to uh, practice. So, sports is struggling on. The athletes are giving their best, the coaches. I can characterize, I can tell you. Sometimes I go to the ministry, there are some administrators that are very, very effective. Same for the coaches, same for the athletes. But we need a system that helps them. The sports media, for mm. instance, you know? How do people look at sports media? How do people look at political media, entertainment media? The sports industry, we have to reposition ourselves as leader in driving the economy. Because of sports, the UK changed their COVID rules so that football can continue. Because the mental health issues, contribution to the economy, all that, you know. So that's when the, when the last hitchman, they passed the sports business bill. I said it's fine, but we're going to go, we should go past conceptualization of the idea to active implementation, knowing to take time. And it's the sports industry that should do it. From NAFA SD, mm. the physical education body, you know, to NIS, you know, to the uh, Ministry of Sports and all that. So that's it. Well, good morning. We've been talking with Chika Chikumereji, bronze medalist at the Olympics for Nigeria 2008, who has been with us in the studio to talk about uh, his event coming up on Saturday, where you just get there to keep fit at the package B of the National Stadium, MK Abiola Stadium in Abuja, and also it will involve a lot of fitness and taekwondo. Well, Chika Chikumereji, before we go, let's take this story. Uh, Chelsea named Rhys James as captain ahead of Liverpool Premier League clash. They want to see how this man can at least uh, lead the, uh, the entire players uh, to do well there. For Rhys James, uh, he's a big one there, a big uh, shoe for him to wear, but he can't do it. Let's see what he will do alongside Chua, who has also been named as his assistant for Chelsea there. Well, we just have to go now. Chika Chukumereje, thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm very grateful for you. <laughs> I look so small in your hand. You almost <laughs> carried me up. Good <laughs> one there. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Thank you very much for coming once again. And we have to go now. I'm at Denny Yee at Jisha Fest. Sport is always business and fitness. Thanks for watching.